Okay, as I said in the last uh, video, we're going to discuss the synthesis of uh, the carboxylic acid derivative of an amide. So an amide, we can think of as being uh, an amino group retrace, replacing a hydroxyl group of a carboxylic acid to form the amide. Remember that we were able to make esters by reaction of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol under slightly acidic conditions. Uh, so you might think we could do the same thing with amines, make amines by using the carboxylic acid and an amine. The problem here is that amines are very good bases and they will just abstract that proton. Uh, so we cannot make them the same way we did. That is, we cannot just take an amine and a carboxylic acid uh, and reflux them under dry conditions and get to the amide. We, uh, we, we end up just doing an acid-base reaction. This is a strong enough base that the acid-base reaction pretty well goes to completion and is close to irreversible so that we don't have access to the pathway that would be needed to make the amide. Luckily, we can make the amides from other carboxylic acid derivatives, for example, an acid chloride. So let's take a look at the uh, reaction mechanism uh, of an acid chloride with an amine. So acid chlorides are quite good electrophiles, as we've already discussed. And the first step on a reaction is just going to be a nucleophilic attack uh, of the carbonyl carbon of the acid chloride by an amine. When we do that, we can make our tetrahedral intermediate and our tetrahedral intermediate will collapse. It can collapse and come back. Uh, that doesn't get us anywhere. We're just back to the starting materials, but we can collapse in a different way by kicking off a chloride. When we do that, we end up with what looks like a protonated amide. Now, it is interesting that if you take an amide and throw it under acidic conditions, the proton prefers to go to the carbonyl carbon, not the nitrogen. So this, this form of a protonated amide is actually very acidic. It readily gives up a proton. Uh, but what is the most basic species in our solution? Well, it happens to be the amines. So the amine will just pull off a proton uh, and give us our final product. But because of this, we need to use two molecules of our amine, uh, two equivalents of our amine for every equivalent of the acid chloride. We get our amine product and the HCl salt of the, of the amine. So our amide product and the HCl salt of the amine. So you have to be aware. Uh, and if you look at the mechanism, you realize that these things are good bases and this thing is a terrible nucleophile, so it'll just sit there at this point. Uh, that's why we have to use two equivalents to get the reaction to go in high yield. A convenient way to make uh, amides is through these diimide, uh, carbodiimide coupling reagents. So these things remove the elements of water. They'll remove a proton and an OH group uh, to form the amide. They're coupling reagents. One of the reasons that they're so versatile uh, in the synthesis, these were developed when uh, Merrifield came up with his solid phase uh, protein synthesis machines. Uh, you'll learn about that in biochemistry. The dicyclohexyl di carbodiimide uh, has these carbon nitrogen bonds. It looks like carbon dioxide where we've replaced an amine uh, for the oxygen. Uh, they'll pick up two protons and an oxygen atom. That's the elements of water. Why these things work so well is this compound DCC is very soluble in something like uh, dichloromethane, which is a good solvent, uh, but this is not. Uh, so it provides a mechanism for a reaction where our reagents can be soluble in the solvent, our product that we want, the amide, soluble in the solvent, but the dicyclohexyl urea 
uh, comes out of solution. The first step of the reaction makes this thing, which is an O-acyl isourea, it's a very has a very good leaving group. So we'll take a look at the mechanism. Don't worry too much about this mechanism. Uh, you can figure it out. The first thing that happens is these are quite basic. They just pull off a proton and get protonated. When they do, they become very good electrophiles. That carbon is very electrophilic and will get attacked by the carboxylate that it just formed. Uh, and that ends up forming our uh, isourea compound. Then another, our amine comes along and it can attack at the carbonyl carbon of this compound, form our tetrahedral intermediate. Uh, our proton has to move from here uh, to this oxygen, which it does, I'm sorry, from here to this nitrogen, which it does quite readily. Uh, and then, oops, we end up having our carbodiimide leave in its hydrated form and our amide. Don't worry, I won't ask this on a midterm exam. I just give you this because you might see it in biochem. We've already discussed that amides are quite stable. Uh, and because of that, our proteins are made from amides. Proteins uh, are the stable molecules that are in muscle. We also use large proteins as catalysts, enzymes. Uh, there's lots of different secondary and tertiary structure for amides. Uh, so the shape of these things can become important. The next video, we're going to talk about nitriles and how they are actually a carboxylic acid derivative. So I'll just stop here.